just uh, watch the video. Is anyone recording? I am recording. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's start the session then. So market bread basically shows the strength in the market rally or weakness or lack of strength in market rally. If it shows uh, if there are more stocks participate in rally, it's a strong. Uh, the market is strong. The rally is strong. If there are fewer and fewer stocks which are participating, the rally is weak. That's the like the basic portion of what market rally is. We'll go through learning objectives, which is a brief introduction of Ned Davis's Fab Five model. It shows the role of market bread in environment models like Ned Davis's. We'll also go through at least introduction of internal and external indicators so that you know what actually is market bread. Market bread is internal indicator. We'll go through that. And the main course, what market bread is, and application of market bread. When it comes to application, you need a lot of creativity to make your own bread. You can use any kinds of indicators, any kinds of concepts to just make your own market bread. We'll go through it later. Just give me a sec. Yeah. So Ned Davis's Fab Five model actually has four, four different things. In the price action that skip, which is into two. He multiplies the weightage of price into two because at the end of the day, everyone knows that price is what matters. RSI doesn't matter too much and PE doesn't matter too much because you're trading price. You're buying the stock using price, not RSI. And sentiment, the emotions on the market, psychology, monetary, that is what the RBI or the Fed is doing, and combination. Mostly we'll ignore like more or less all of them because what we are interested in, interested in market bread. I'll go through all of them. So golden cross we know is a moving average crossover of 50 and 200 or 50 and 100. Same with uh, stochastic, stochastic RSI, they are trend sensitive. I had com compared the trend sensitive and trend following in my previous uh, in mentorship um, the session, which I had. So the basic thing is trend following. It shows where the trend is going and trend sensitive is used for mean reversion. For most part, Trend sensitive indicators like RSI, stochastic, they are in the neutral zone for most of their uh, calculation. The advanced decline, the ratio, and high low, they are all market bred. We'll get to that later. The diffusion index is sum of other components, and go with more is basically momentum. If momentum is strong, they'll just go for, they'll just buy that kind of stock or that kind of market. Sentiment put call ratio. The ratio of put, uh, put options is to call. If it's too high, it's basically a contrary and indicator. Same with overbought, oversold, and valuation is on the fundamental side. And asset flows is basically mutual funds. The monitor is uh, kind of interesting because it has, you know, it has interest rates. And depending on what the Fed or RBI think, They'll increase or decrease the money flow in the economy itself, which is why it's interesting. And combo is composed of six different trusted stock models, which Janet Davis used back then. I think it was in 1987, if I want to say, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Internal indicators are anything that related to price. What do you see in charts? External is out of charts. So the magazines you get, the surveys, of the investor surveys, the crowd psychology, valuations, what the economic conditions are, if it's a high inflation environment, and internals are moving averages, stochastics, and market bread. Yeah, as I said, as per Investopedia, then it refers to number of stocks participating. We usually use it for broad index. So something like Nifty 500 or Nifty 50. 
we try not to use it it's not it doesn't work that well in sector because usually sectors and they have momentum on their own if a sector is outperforming majority of the sector will outperform majority of the stocks of the sector will outperform the market compared to if, if you'll use uh, the nifty 500 for example you'll have a better results and yeah the case in point of course is covid rally many newspapers and print media they were questioning the rally but as we'll see later on both in s&p 500 and nifty and asx the rally was supported by multiple stocks across many sectors with the exception of you know, pvr that kind of stuff airlines pvr which would include which would basically give us a confirmation signal that the rally is here to stay we'll get to the applications of market bread in this example i'm taking all the stocks of s&p 500 and i'm checking how many of them are about the 20 day moving average the simple moving average so using the same concepts that we use in different you know, rsis and other indicators so here we see there's division prices are making higher high while the indicator is not that's one of the red flags you can kind of like go contrarian view over here somewhere over here and as you can see towards the end of it when the market was making a new low and this was already at all time low number of stocks about the the percentage of stocks rather about the 20 day moving average and this point of time is less than 1.54 1. 1.36 percent and this went on for about well over a month this shows extreme bearishness in short term it also has a lot of potential to scan for really good stocks the stocks which are above moving average for example in this case 0.5 those a couple of stocks will outperform in the next bull run that's basic uh, like you can also have this and the session refresh in the Lumia Mint's uh, mentorship session where he has he basically goes very deep into this this is one of the ways we can scan it and in the similar manner as the rally is going we see short term content trades around here in a similar fashion we can do for the medium term thing which is uh, in my case 50 day moving average and you'll see this is a similar performance here where you see just 1.7 percent of uh, stocks were above moving average so you can scan for them you can find those one percent uh, stocks which are bullish in such a bearish market in when the market is 30 percent down and the next bull run would be dead run in this case uh, most of it is uh, nasdaq based stocks so there are tech stocks mostly and even here although you'll get more signals over here for contrarian trades you'll get more reliable signals over here depending on your sensitivity so if you use 50 day moving average you'll get fewer signals compared to this but you'll get more reliable signals and we do exact same thing with 200 day moving average and yeah as you can see we get very few signals over here and the confirmation fact comes way into the uh, how to say correction and the same thing for long term this is more for long term peeps and the people who are who want like want to see stocks for more than one year more than five years they want to scan way towards the bottom of the crash that we there are more different methods of uh, calculating market bread all of this is by the way market bread in this case we use moving averages oh hey we are looking for new um, six months high so basically last 20 days high if there are more stocks making higher highs in this case uh, it's asx 
you don't see the thing it's asx the more number of stocks that are making higher highs and the better the rally of uh, the index like as you can see there are fewer people fewer stocks sorry who are making newer highs new six months highs and they are in fact becoming lower and lower which is why we see the rally becoming more and more weaker as we get into 2019 as we get into end of 2021 same way here so this is asx this is australian index and for this we do something that's inverse we see for new six month lows in this case wherever there are six months lows where there are more lows and this is more reliable by the way you can see the low is formed in the index itself here the index and lows are more reliable because stocks become stocks go to the low in a more synced manner as the market goes lower in higher scale when there is higher the sector rotation takes care of uh, balancing out but low in lower case the panic sets in this is of course especially true for the lowest part over here in november in a similar fashion we can see asx advanced decline in this case uh, i have made uh, like some error i should have used a moving average with advanced decline because there's a lot of noise here with moving average we can smooth out and you can make out that over here there are fewer advances and more declines compared to the price action which is still going higher and again see and this is increasing and there are fewer declines and there are more advances almost 800 almost 500 which and kind of has another uh, and potential for contrary trade as i said advanced decline line this is much more easier to read and i would say it says the uh, kind of uh, the same thing that there is contrary in the weakness is still there in the market there might be a short term trade for contrary in you know, option trade but for the market there is still weakness so we might see the asx index still making lower highs and lower lows i had mentioned about the panic market panic this is perhaps the most uh, reliable mo- uh, market bread uh, thing, market bread indicator when it comes to identifying lows. So in this case, you see wherever the highest, highest and highest, there's lows in the short term and intermediate term. In the long term, of course, we see uh, many, many lows. And the volume basically jumps and all market participants panic towards the end. And right here, people start accumulating in the big guys. But in the intermediate term, when the bull market is still there, you can see that at every high point, there's a low point here. Again, this becomes a really good contrary in trade. Earlier, we used moving averages, we used volume. To build our uh, our market bread. This time we'll use RSI. We are searching for all RS for all our stocks which have RSI more than 50, more than 70. That is 14 period RSI more than 70. So if percent of stocks is increases as percent of stocks increases, the confidence rally increases. So this is a confirmatory index instead of uh, a contrarian one. The, like we saw here towards the here's the COVID crash for example so towards the end of crash you see for very for like I think a few weeks or so it was close to zero over here so you want to see the that one stock or that two stocks which have RSI more than 70 those are again and the way we saw in the earlier moving averages thing you want to scan through the whole index 
and you want to find those couple of stocks which are above moving average or which have RSI more than seventy. Those are the ones which will outperform in the next bull run. Same with RSI soul. In RSI or soul, you are looking for inverse. You are looking for more contra trades. As it makes uh, higher highs and makes uh, peaks, the price action usually makes a lower low. Again, this is a lot more reliable in case of contra trades because as market goes down in corrections and in flash crashes like cold crashes, the market participants are synced with each other. Not just uh, stock market, even bond market, commodity markets, they all come down. And the grand cycle comes down in one, in a single basically week or so. Yeah. This is, I've gone through a bit quickly because of uh, New Year's thing. But yeah, it's that simple. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah, quick question about uh, RSI overbought. So when it is overbought, doesn't it mean that, uh, you know, I mean, it's too heavy and we should not invest on it? Or should we invest at that point of time when RSI is over 70 and is considered overbought? Yeah, RSI, it's a very contentious kind of concept because earlier in 2002, there was a study on RSI where in the dot-com boom and bubble, the researchers basically backtested whenever there was RSI 70, they would buy and RSI 30 or less, they'll sell. And they had a profitable backtest. But the point is, it depends on how you use it. And as I said, RSI 70 or any kind of uh, market bread, which, uh, so let's say even volumes, advanced declines and new highs, let's say, new six months highs, it's not as liable as uh, market bottoms. Market bottoms are easier to, like, not just uh, the flash crash, even the intermediate and short term crashes, short term corrections, they are easier to identify because of the mild panic and how the market goes in sync when it's coming down compared to when it's going up. So, which is why overbought still does work, but it depends on context. So, let's say if the bear market is still, still on. So you wouldn't see this. So yeah, you won't see many stocks uh, contributing to the bull market. You'll see going in lower and lower. As you see, this starts getting lower and lower, and ASX becomes uh, it kind of tapers off. Okay. So um, should we correlate RSI with some other indicators as well? Yeah, it's best to have multiple confirmation. So even in Fab Five model, you'll see, yeah, Net Davis has three different market bread indicators, which have to confirm with these two of them, with trend following and trend sensitive indicator. Not to mention, they have to have momentum in the market, and diffusion takes, which is uh, some of other components. Yeah. So and confirmation is always good. You always need it. Market bread itself is a confirmation or contrary indicator. So if this if this has lower lows or lower highs, you have to be careful of it. It's a red flag. And then if you see the RSI in the S&P 500 thing, even that has all momentum indicators show the lower highs compared to the high high in price action. They kind of confirm each other. And using moment using moving averages, you can have a trailing stop loss right here. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, and this is the performance of the Fab Five model. So what the model actually does is, it gives, it gives zero, one, and minus one. Those three kind of. Uh, outputs based on all of this so if a sentiment is really good the sentiment might give one if it's bullish 
so this way when it's very bearish that's how model is tweaked and they have got quite good outperformance in 10 years from 204 to 2014 and for illustration this is how market bet in last one month approximately one month looks like in nifty so nifty posted a low after the after market bread posted low so this is where nifty was posting low and this is where market bread posted low this was a good contrary in indicator right there just 21 day moving average and 15 day moving average So, have you got any other queries? So yeah, we can. I guess we can wrap it up. And yeah, twenty one minute session. I think it's good enough. It's a fairly small topic. Just market bread over here. Maybe in the next sessions we'll continue cover different things of model. But the point is, we have to make your own model, and much of this uh, data doesn't apply as well to India because we don't have that much depth compared to the US. But we can be inspired by this model and make our own inspired model. Alright, guys, let's wrap it up make sure to go through the resources that is this chapter over here and lumia man's long-term investing session